Hello again, everyone. Today I am here with an exciting new addition to my watercolor collection. This is the new Super Granulation set from Schmincke, which is the Urban set. Ever since the last few sets, because they seem to be continuing to release them, I've only gotten the smaller size because they're they're pretty inexpensive and I can I can feel like I can try them and not feel like if you know if any one of them is not necessarily super fantastic to me then you know I, I haven't put a huge investment into these and then if I do like them I can always get a bigger tube and this one says it is limited so I've, I've already put um I've already put all the colors in this little case here so this says limited edition super granulation urban and I got this from Jackson's Jackson's always to me seems to be the lowest price for these sets uh, I'm in the US and buying from the UK it's it's pretty inexpensive for these little five color sets and so this is this is the only one since the um, Hayes set that said it was limited so I'm not sure. I think all of the other sets in the super granulation sets are um, are going to be around for a while, but I don't know about this one. Uh, one of the reasons why I kind of like the looks of this one is that it does include a couple of colors, again, that aren't too prominent in the other sets, except for, of course, the recent Volcano set, which does have a yellow and a red but this one has a yellow and a red, which all the other sets other than the Volcano set does not really have. They might have some yellowish colors, but they, they, the red is certainly a little bit lacking. Although this, these look more sort of like earth colors, even though it's an urban palette, they do look a little bit like earth colors. And uh, I've already written out the colors here so that I can go ahead and swatch them on this side of the paper. This side of the paper has the Rockwell self-evolving watercolors, which I figured that was a good pairing <laughs> to have those on the same page. And I must say, I'm not sure if this will have already, um, I, I can't remember my, my lineup for when, what video is going to be go going on uh, YouTube. But as you can see here, I mean, there's, there's some good separation and granulation, but I did a second, um, Oh, sorry, I realized that was showing you that and not the um, thing. Um, I, I did a second set of swatching of some of these colors after they'd sat in the pan and dried for a while. And they're so much more vibrant <laughs> after, I think I just am not used to working with wet watercolors. Unfortunately, today I'm gonna be working with wet watercolors again, but um, meaning right out of the tube as opposed to dried in the pan. But, um, but these are, this is not as vibrant as they can get, basically, the last swatching I did. So I just wanted to let you know about that. And if I haven't already put the video up on YouTube, I will be soon. Um, but I'm only profiling a few because they, they became favorites right away. But anyway, so that's on the Rockwell stuff. Uh, and then I have already squeezed the tubes, tube color out into these pans. This only just happened like maybe an hour ago, so they're not, maybe not even that long. So they're not gonna be solidified yet. Uh, I, you know, I don't prefer to work this way with watercolors. I prefer to work with them completely dry. Uh, I just was so excited to get these and swatch these once I got them, because I got them today, um, that, I, that I went ahead and put them in pans. And you may notice that there are actually six colors here. So the extra color, is a special edition color from Schmincke, and I have no idea how to pronounce this. Uh, maybe Yintico Red? It's apparently a new pigment. Uh, let's see what it says. Does it say anything on the tube? It says limited edition. Because uh, normally it has pigment information, which I'm trying to find. I mean, maybe it's just this Yolintico? <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of like the Yelemon Blue or however you say that, because I think uh, that was a, a rather new pigment. This is a new new pigment in the red family. It uh, appears rather pink in the pan. Uh, and I'm not going to lie, this was pricey. 
um, for a five milliliter tube, it was super pricey. I just kind of threw it in with my order. I, I think I might've been like really close to a free shipping tier or something, which is why I added this because this was all that was in my order. But uh, if, if you don't like this color, don't get it because it, it's too pricey to not like it in my opinion. <laughs> all right, well, I put all these all over here already. So I'm gonna be pulling from here. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see these. But I did wanna show you that, oh, and I have a little, uh-oh, a little swatch, uh, swatch uh, card of watercolor paper here, which I'm gonna put on there. This is a little, I think it's just a little pill case that I got vintage and um, 10 pans fit perfectly in here. I've affixed them with earthquake putty into the bottom because they're not magnetic. But uh, I used to have all, um, what did I have in here? Uh, Windsor Newton, that's what I had. <laughs> I had to think of it for a second. I had all Windsor Newton colors in here before, and I just was never touching it, mostly because I am not a big Windsor Newton fan. Um, they're fine. They're fine watercolors. They're just not my go-tos. So I took those out and figured I would fill them with something that I'd be more likely to use. And the other cases that I have, the other Schmincke granulating sets, they're all full. So I, I don't have any room in those to put anything else. But I will have to find four more colors here. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do, well, I'm gonna put, even though I put these in the pan just like, you know, very recently, I'm gonna put a little bit of water on them just so that we can get the most out of these that we can. I, I don't prefer to work with these so wet, the, the colors so wet, I like them to be fully dried but we're we're gonna deal with what we have today. So let's go ahead and see. Okay, I'm gonna keep this one out of the frame for now while I do these. So, and I am using the uh, Jackson's Quill 10 slash zero brush, which works really, really great for swatches and, and just about everything else, but uh, it's a great brush. Okay. Yeah, these have hardened just a little bit. I noticed that some of them were fairly stiff in the tube. So maybe they won't take that long to, to harden. Okay, I needed more color than that. Okay, so urban yellow. I'm actually gonna grab even more. And it looks like there is a pink undertone to this yellow. And I am going to, let's just dot a little water here. We got a little dot of water right there where it wasn't supposed to be. Okay, so let's move on to Urban Red. The reason why I prefer to work with colors uh, in hard pans is I kind of know how to deal with them. I know how much water should be in there to um, wet them. I kind of know how to control them. These are obviously going to give you a little bit of glare while they're wet, but don't worry, that will go down as it dries. And I will also put this close to the camera. That is granulating really, really well. And so is the yellow, but I definitely see a little bit of pink in there. Actually, let's see what the pigments are in the pink uh, or in the yellow, sorry. <laughs> Yes. Okay. This makes a lot of sense. So it has PY159 and PV16. So it's the PV16, which is a violet, um, which is creating that little bit of a pinkish hue, which you'll probably be able to make out a little bit better here in a minute. The uh, urban red. Oh, it has many colors. Okay. So it is PY159. And I think that the PY159 might be the one that's in the volcano set. I think. I, I can't remember for sure, but, but that sounds familiar. So it's PY159, PR108, PB35, and PBR6. So there's a yellow, a red, a blue, and a brown in there. So that's quite a complex red. It does look very similar to a potter's pink or um, a Venetian red, maybe, maybe more on the Venetian red side than the potter's pink side, but it's really pretty. I'm, I'm liking it. All right, so let's go into the urban green. And I think, you know, as it as it says, it, it 
would be good to paint urban environments. Okay, it looks like I got a little extra pigment on that one. That's the other thing. You can really use way too much <laughs> when they, uh, when the colors are pretty wet because it's harder to control how much gets on the brush. Okay, so that's the urban green. And I'm gonna, oh, so let me tell you what colors that is. Colors those, those are? <laughs> that is PY159, again, PB36 and PBK11. So the PBK11 is gonna be that granulating black. Uh, PY159 is granulating yellow and PB36 is a blue. So that one's looking very nice. All right, urban brown. And a lot of these sets have greens and browns. So this is not necessarily something that's gonna be too new, although that's a really pretty brown, I must say. Who knew urban brown would be pretty? It's kind of something you want to avoid, right? Urban brown? I don't know. <laughs> Let's not go there. Um, okay, so this is, again, PY159, PR108, and PBK11. So you've got that granulating black in there again. And then the last one here, which is a gray, is also something that you find a lot in the granulating sets, sort of variations on gray but they are nice, so. And that's looking more on the black side of gray rather than blue. Okay, and this gray contains a lot of pigments. It has PY159, which seems to be the um, cohesive factor here, PR108, PB35, and PBK11. Okay, and I, I'm actually gonna see if I can add a layer to this red here, cause it, oh yeah, there we go. That's much better. So that we can get some more saturation. Same with the yellow. And as you can see in the pan, the violet and the yellow has kind of um, separated a bit. Uh, that is not from me contaminating the pan, that is from the two colors in that are mixed in that color. Okay, let's see if we can do this. Yeah, that's a little better too. Because when I saw the difference between these swatches for uh, the Rockwell paints and the ones that I got once the pans were dry, it was like night and day. It was really quite amazing. All right, so let's let those dry, and then I'm gonna go down here and do this new red. I'm just gonna call it the new red, not like the old red. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. Oh, that is right up my alley, unfortunately. Um, I say unfortunately because it's pricey. So this is kind of like a cobalt violet, in my opinion. And the, the right kind of cobalt violet. I tend to like cobalt violets that run a little bit more pink. And that is definitely running a little bit more pink. So personally, for me, I will use this color. So I think, you know, whether it's worth the cost, it's still a splurge. But, um, but I will definitely use this color. And you can tell it's got a little bit of granulation. It's got all, it hits all the... <laughs> the marks for things that I like. Um, so I would probably use this. I, I did not see a larger um, tube available than the five milliliter tube. So they may never release it in a larger tube. Um, my suspicion is because it is a very expensive pigment, like um, the new blue, the Yellowman blue, or someone please, if you know how to say it, please let me know. I, I, I think it's really just sort of an abbreviation for something, I think. But that pigment is so expensive. If you, um, I did get it in a set from somewhere that made it kind of reasonably priced. I can't remember it. I can't remember which company I got it from, but you know, I mean, it's, it's okay. It's a blue, but I didn't feel like it was sort of an earth shattering blue <laughs> that would be worth the cost because in some places, if you want to get a half pan, it can be like in the high double digits for a half pan. Well, maybe not high double digits, maybe like $30 for a half 
for a half pan, which is crazy in my opinion. This was not that expensive, but, uh, but it wasn't cheap either. But this to me is a little bit more exciting than the blue. Because this is, this is more along the lines of a cobalt violet, but it's got something else going for it. It, it definitely, it's, it's like an intense cobalt violet, in my opinion. And I love cobalt violet. All right, so enough about that limited color. Let's go back to the urban colors here. Um, all of these are looking really, really nice as they dry. This one I think is actually really, really interesting with the yellow and the violet. One of the things that I really like about the super granulation sets, uh, at least some of the colors in the super granulation sets, is colors are combined like this, like a yellow and a violet, which would normally produce brown because yellow and violet, <coughs> excuse me, are pretty much at the opposite ends of the color wheel. So normally you would just get like brown. But because of how they're putting it together, I don't know if the particles are different sizes or what. <coughs> Sorry. I should be good now. <laughs> um, I don't know if the particle sizes are different or what, but you're, you're getting the two colors. You're not getting a blending of the colors, which I like. However, if you're trying to do like delicate floral paintings or something like that, these are probably not the colors for you because they do color separate and they do granulate as the name implies, super granulation, right? But this is really interesting. Like if I, just based on these now, if I were to pick one to get a full big tube of, maybe this one, maybe the urban yellow, because um, there aren't a lot of interesting yellows out there. So this is, this is something new. Uh, urban red, I feel like urban red is a lot like other colors. Um, it's, it's very pretty. And it has so many colors in it, but I'm not really seeing <laughs> all those individual colors, but I am seeing, you know, maybe a little bit of violet coming through. Um, you, you probably could get this a similar effect with Venetian red because Venetian red is, um, although Venetian red is opaque, whereas this might not be as opaque, um, but it's similar. It's similar in tone. I don't have any Venetian red handy, otherwise I would go ahead and compare it, but it's very similar to that. And in the lighter tone, it does come off a little bit like Potter's Pink. All right, so on this paper, I would say that the urban green is probably the least interesting, but I, I don't take my word for it. I thought I saw a little bit of red in this green when it was in the pan. Um, yeah, I don't see it anymore. You never like, see that purple and that yellow. <laughs> but I was seeing, when I first put water on it, I thought I saw a little bit of red in the green. And um, that's one thing that I really, really like about that color in the Super Granulation set Desert. Their desert green is just gorgeous. Like that, if you're only gonna get a couple colors from the Super Granulation sets, that is one that I would get because it's really, really unique. And it does have like a red and a green that separates, kind of like this does here. Um, and instead of mixing and creating brown or black, um, but it's really, really neat. And I, I think you can see a little bit of that kind of thing going on here. Um, again, so this, I'm using the Canson paper in this. I've, I've moved on from the Pentallic field book. I don't think that this paper is as good as the Pentallic paper. Um, I've been kind of bummed that I haven't been able to find another notebook of that, but I'm trying to work with what I have. <laughs> um, but I do think that this is not showing off colors as nicely as that other thing did. And this is also the backside of a piece of paper in here. So sometimes the backside, so here's the front, and then sometimes the backside does not do as well. Um, I don't, I don't know why. Maybe the sizing is a little bit different on the back. I don't, I don't know. Um, but anyway, so, but it's pretty, but this is probably the least interesting one, uh, along with this urban brown, which I don't think is all that interesting. It's a pretty color. Uh, I feel like there are some colors that are very similar to this in the Roman Schmall line, um, cause they have a lot of really pretty browns in Roman Schmall brand. Um, so I would look through there probably before I would get this one if you're getting these as one-offs. 
uh, there is a little bit of like orangish color coming out in this little tiny bit here. I don't know how well that would come out. What I'm gonna actually gonna do here at the end is I'm gonna get a pool of water for if I have enough room for each of these and uh, see if I can get some more interesting things going on with these, but we'll see. Um, and then this last one, Urban Gray, is is really pretty, I think. there. I, I'm always a sucker for a good gray, and this is a pretty good gray. It's got a little bit of blue highlights in there. It, I think it does lean a little bit more towards black than being a bluish gray, but it's still really pretty. All right, so what I'm going to do... I am, and maybe I'll just move around the page or this part of the page here. So let's go ahead and do a little splash of water because this seems to have been getting better results with the granulating colors than um, doing the traditional swatch. So that is the yellow. Let's leave that and see what happens. Okay, then I'm gonna get a spot of water over here. Probably should have done them next to each other, but what can you do? Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of that red in there. Oh, and that really spread out really quickly, didn't it? Okay, so let's see. I don't wanna mix it too much because I don't want it to um, blend too much. I want it to kind of separate and do what it's gonna do. I'm gonna do the same. I'm just gonna do a little square here and do the green. Let's see if we get something different with that green. I'm hoping so. Because sometimes with more water, you can really see more about the, the paint. Actually, that's already looking more interesting. I'm sorry, there we go. Um, I don't know if you can see, but there's definitely a little bit more yellow coming out there. So then I'm gonna do one with the brown. And these probably won't fully dry by the time I leave you here today, but you'll at least get to see some of the color separation that happens, if any, with these colors. Okay, so let's do one with Urban Gray right here. And this is really just more, for the most part, more pigment than water so that we can see what happens. And what? why not? Let's do, let's do the, the new red as well, because I do have a little bit more room there. So basically I'm just putting a, some water on the page and then that was probably a little too much of that. Let's move that around a little bit. Okay, so let's go back up and see. So the paper buckled a little bit, um, but with the yellow, see again, you're seeing sort of that purplish color leech off, um, but the underlying yellow is actually quite a bit brighter than if you see it here, because I think that violet is probably dulling the yellow down a little bit. So you're seeing that separation. With the urban red, um, I think I'm seeing a little bit more of the true red that's in there and um, seeing a little bit more of sort of like orange around the edges. Okay, and then with the green, yeah, the green is much more interesting, it, very watered down. Like this, this would be beautiful actually. Maybe some sea moss or something like that, <laughs> be really pretty. And this did have blue in it, which I can see more here than I could there. And I think I'm gonna be doing swatches like this for everything, especially the granulation, granulating watercolors, just because this shows you so much more, you know, what, what it's gonna look like if you really add a lot of water to it. Here's the Urban Brown, which um, I think has some, some really interesting stuff going on. And then here's that gray, which, you know, it's not much different actually than, than the, the darker swatch. You can kind of see the blue separate out there from the black. And then with this one, again, it's looking very similar. There's only one color here, there's only one pigment, but I was interested to see uh, whether it would look more granulating and it does look like it looks a little bit more granulating with more water. 
but uh, let me zoom out a little bit so that we can get all of that or most of it in the frame there. Um, so yeah, so my first impression is still <laughs> that the urban yellow is the most interesting. I do think the green got way more interesting in the uh, super wet swatch here. I'm trying to tilt it a little bit so that you can actually see without the glare. Um, so that became much more interesting, as did the brown. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, do you have to have these in addition to other super granulation sets? Probably not. Um, I mean, I would have to compare them to the other colors, which I would, maybe I will do a future video of that if I can find all my swatches and have them together in one place. But just as standalone colors, these are pretty interesting. And if, you know, if these were a set standalone set, which it is a standalone set, but if it wasn't part of the super granulation line, I probably would go out and get it even, you know, even without that being the case, because they are really interesting colors. And um, I don't think you can have too many interesting colors in your collection at all. Uh, and as far as this red, so... I think it's kind of interesting that they're calling it a red because I would call this more of a violet. It certainly leans purple more so than a true red. Uh, but if you are a fan of cobalt violet, like a more pinky cobalt violet, this is going to be a color for you. It is really, really pretty. And that means it's a color for me because I love, I love that color. It's, it's beautiful. It, this has some really nice granulation. It's stronger in tint strength than uh, most cobalt violets because if you have ever messed with cobalt violet <laughs> any length of time from different brands you know that almost all of them are, are kind of hard to re-wet and you kind of need to layer on to get saturation but this is way more saturated and um, you just need to use a little bit and you're and it's going to go a long way uh, and you could use it in the place of cobalt violet I think so if that's if that's your jam this is going to be your jam, I think. Uh, but if not, you know, then don't worry about it. Don't, uh, you, you saw, you've seen me do the swatch and that's all you need. I was just going to show you this green again. It seems to be getting even more interesting because now I think we've got like the yellow, the green and the blue separating really cool. And you're definitely getting different, uh, levels of Brown with that Brown, but I do still think that there are Lots of browns that are similar to this in the Roman Schmall line. So check those out if you're looking for something like this. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. This was an exciting one because I always like new, fun watercolors. Um, I'm not sure how many more of these sets Schminka is going to make. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's just going to be a forever thing just because they, they probably make money off of it and people like them. So uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how many more super granulation sets they can come up with. But it, but it looks like this. they say it is limited along with the Haze set they said was limited. Although I have noticed at uh, Jackson's a new Haze set that only has three of the colors. I can't remember which three it is, but um, that only has three of the colors instead of five. So they have a new little set, which is, I think, US, it's like 20 some dollars. So... If you just want to try that, that might be a good way to do that. The only problem is it, it is, they say, limited. How long is limited? I don't know. It, it, you know, I think that's, <laughs> that's up to Schminka. All right. Well, that's all I had for you today. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. If you enjoy this video, give it a like. I hope to see you next time. But in the meantime, have a great day. And I'm going to try and get, as we go out, try and get the glare <laughs> to not show on those colors. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.